Hello, my name is uh, Scott Conyer. I'm the director of Adcare Educational Institute of Maine and the New England Prevention Technology Transfer Center. Um, so with this recording, um, we're uh, providing an overview of the New England uh, Prevention Technology Transfer Center, um, the PTTC model. Um, and just to give you a sense of what um, we'll be looking at and developing um, and providing an area of training and technical assistance for the prevention workforce. So I'm gonna go through a few slides here to give you uh, the overview of this program um, and give you a sense of uh, what's coming up here in New England. Um, so just wanna start with uh, why the technology transfer center model. Um, and here we included a quote from uh, Dr. McCann's Kantz, who is, of course, the Assistant Secretary for SAMHSA, and she really talks about sort of the, the reasoning behind bringing the TTC model to prevention. It's actually a model that's been used already um, with within the treatment world, um, the ATTCs, or the Addiction Technology Transfer Centers, so applying that to prevention as well as mental health. Um, and really, uh, sort of the overarching theme with this is that we're broadening access uh, to prevention training and technical assistance. That's really sort of um, the, the nugget or the, the, the philosophy behind this is that we wanna make sure all Americans engaged in prevention, all with people within the, the workforce have the ability to access uh, training and technical assistance to ensure that um, you know, the, the very latest uh, prevention science is getting to the ground level and implemented in states and communities. Um, first, I want to give you a little bit of background around AdCare Maine. Um, so we are the administrator and coordinator for the uh, New England Prevention Technology Transfer Center, and we actually have quite a bit of experience um, in this realm of training and technical assistance and workforce development. Um, we're an organization that's been around for over 30 years, um, and here you can see many of the programs that are in operation um, here, many um, state contracts with the state of Maine. Um, one that is looking at training and TA services for the treatment recovery workforce. Um, a separate uh, contract specifically looking at prevention workforce um, and training. Um, another program that's looking at training and program management around Maine's public health emergency preparedness and disaster behavioral health services. Um, at Care Maine is also the coordinator of all of Maine's problem gambling services here in the state. We also coordinate um, the educational services for individuals who have OUI offenses. Um, here in Maine, uh, after an OUI offense, there's a certain program you need to go through and able to get your license back, and so we coordinate the classes um, behind that, which actually utilizes a prevention curriculum at its heart. Um, and then we also are part of a new project that's providing some coordination um, and training services for some new recovery centers uh, that have opened up here in the state. We're also part of what's called the Maine Behavioral Health Workforce Development Collaborative. So this is a collaborative of three organizations um, that is looking at the larger issues and uh, trends around uh, the behavioral health workforce. Um, so it includes us, at Care Educational Institute of Maine, the Co-occurring Collaborative Serving Maine, and the Muskie School of Public Service. So again, the three of us together are looking at these larger uh, workforce development issues um, and initiatives uh, for the behavioral health field. When we look at prevention specifically, um, again, this is something where Edcare has been um, doing a lot of work uh, for over 20 years in terms of training and TA. Um, one aspect of that is providing technical assistance to the state for the Prime for Life curriculum, which is utilized in a couple of different programs. One is called the Student Intervention Reintegration Program, which is um, offered in many schools in Maine as an alternative to suspension when there are drug policy violations. Um, we are also the fiscal home and provide the administrative staff for the Maine Prevention Certification Board. We coordinate Maine CDC's uh, Prevention Workforce Development Work Group. Um, and then we coordinate um, and run many trainings here in Maine around prevention, which includes the annual prevention conference, um, but it also includes many uh, trainings around opiate addiction, which are funded by the SAMHSA SPIF Rx grant, um, prevention ethics, um, and some other courses. And here you can see many of the larger um, events that we coordinate, um, the Prevention, Prevention Professionals Day, um, the Annual Infectious Disease Conference, Problem Gambling Conference, Military Community Network Conference, so we do a lot of uh, large conferences as well. 
and just to give you a sense of the kind of volume um, we're used to. Um, so every year we're doing over 100 trainings, over 5,000 participants um, are attending our trainings, and uh, we generally get pretty high marks. So 98% of our participants rank our events uh, three or higher on a scale of one to five when we're looking at meeting uh, those training objectives. And here you can get a snapshot of our organizational structure. So the New England PTTC sits amongst the other programs I described to you. Um, so we're a growing organization. We've got quite a bit going on. Very you know, excited to be involved um, in coordinating the New England PTTC. Um, so the uh, cooperative agreement uh, for the New England PTTC uh, started uh, the end of September of 2018 and will run through the end of September of 2023. And the purpose of the program really is to establish this national PTTC network to provide training and technical assistance services to the substance abuse prevention field. Uh, so it's going to include your professionals, pre-professionals, organizations, um, and others in the prevention community. So it's not just certified prevention specialists, it's not just state prevention specialists. Um, it could be coalition members of a DFC co uh, coalition. Um, it could be educators in schools that are running uh, prevention programs. So it's really anybody who is working in their state or community or organization uh, to provide uh, prevention services or working on prevention uh, initiatives. So here you can see what the technology transfer center model looks like. So um, it's a really neat diagram that um, shows you what this is all about. And really at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is get prevention research into practice. So there's a lot of steps along the way. First, we need to figure, we, you know, we need, obviously need to be um, keeping on top of emerging science around prevention, ATOD, um, other kind of topic areas, and then look at how are we gonna translate, how are we gonna put that into some kind of package um, to get to the workforce? So that may be a in-person training, maybe a webinar, um, and maybe some kind of digital tool or print tool, um, whatever that package may be, depending on the audience and the best way to kind of, to disseminate that. Um, and then it's really looking at what can we do um, to get the workforce to be ready to adopt and implement um, the research into practice. So a lot of steps along the way there. And so really we're looking at three levels of services uh, coming from the PTTC. Uh, the first one, the first level is universal technical assistance, which looks at mass mailings, publications of information, newsletters, um, but generally it's kind of one-way communication. These really mass reach uh, vehicles, uh, a lot of online content, um, our website, social media, those kind of things. Uh, the next layer is the targeted technical assistance. So these are going to be your in-person trainings, uh, one-off webinars, um, live recorded. Um, so a little bit more interactive, a little bit more targeted in terms of the audience, but still kind of a, a one. It's but but kind of a one-time offering, not necessarily a sustained um, offering. And that's where you get into the intensive technical assistance. So this is where it is. It is more sustained. So it may be it may start as a training but then um, followed by um, a series of calls or a learning community, um, some kind of ongoing process to get a certain practice or a certain piece of science um, adopted into some kind of uh, vehicle for implementation in states and communities. Um, and like the strategic prevention framework, of course, you know, looking at throughout all of this to making sure um, that all of our approaches are, are grounded in cultural and linguistic appropriateness. So that's an important part of our work. So as I've discussed, there's really gonna be a wide range of training and TA products available from the PTTC. That's gonna include uh, newsletters, updates, and news from SAMHSA and other federal partners and other PTTC partners, um, in-person training. So that's maybe your typical full day, half day, uh, in-person face-to-face trainings. It may be providing um, content experts for a state conference on prevention. Um, so that can look a, a few different ways. Um, it can be live and recorded webinars it will be some products that we'll be producing. Um, Self-paced courses, so not something you can take, you know, on your own time and work through um, tailored intensive technical assistance and then resource development. So that's gonna be your um, your resource materials and products. So it could be literature reviews, white papers, implementation guides, uh, those kind of things. 
Um, so the PTTC is part of an overall transfer technology center network, which includes the ATTCs, the addiction technology transfer centers, and also the new MHTTCs or the mental health technology transfer center. So the three, the three networks together form this, this larger network. And so within each network, there's regional centers um, across the country. Um, there's also national specialty centers, um, the Latino and Hispanic national TTC and the American Indian Alaskan Native National TTC. And those two specialty centers um, are, there's one each for ATTC, mental health TTC and prevention. Um, so basically three Latino and Hispanic TTCs and three American Indian and Alaskan Native um, TTCs. So this provides a great opportunity for what I'm calling multi-dimensional collaboration. And just what that means is, so there's the opportunity for regional centers within each network to collaborate. So within the Prevention Technology Transfer Center network, you know, we're going to have the opportunity to collaborate with our partners, you know, out west and the Midwest, um, all the regions of the country. Um, and then within our region, so here with, in New England, we have um, the ATTC based in Brown University and the mental health TTC based at Yale. So the three um, TTCs within this region will also be looking at opportunities for collaboration, which means it's going to create some really neat opportunities for some cross learning uh, for these workforces. Because as we know, um, the issues that we, we deal with definitely have a lot of blending points. So um, it's really exciting um, chance for that kind of collaboration across the continuum of services. So the network, um, the PTTC network, the New England PTTC is one of 10 regional centers across the country. We have the National Coordination Office, which kind of keeps us all, um, you know, coordinated, right? Um, works on branding and website, um, sort of national initiatives. Um, and then we have the two specialty centers, as I, as I talked about. And here's a map that gives you, um, shows you where all the centers are located. So there you can see us here in Maine, um, housing the New England PTTC uh, network here at AdCare Maine. So the PTTC services, um, you know, there's really kind of three key aspects to this. So they're gonna be tailored to meet the needs of recipients. So we're not going to go off, off on our own and develop what we think the workforce needs. I mean, certainly our team has a lot of great experience in this area, so we definitely will have our ideas that will help inform and shape uh, what we get developed, but um, it's it's going to be largely uh, almost entirely driven by what the workforce tells us is needed, um, whether that's what type of content, what type of delivery service. Um, that's all going to come from you all in terms of what comes out of the TTC, uh, the PTTC. Um, of course, our services are gonna be based in prevention science and use evidence-based and promising practices. That's gonna be very important, of course. Um, and then also we have the opportunity to leverage the expertise and resources available to the alliances formed within and across uh, the regions and the networks. So again, those, those collaboration opportunities across the country. So your New England PTTC team is basically three organizations. So it's us here at Care Maine, of course, administrating and providing the overall coordination and direction for the New England PTTC. Um, we have our evaluator, uh, which is a public consulting group. Um, they're providing all our evaluation services for the project. And then the, uh, our partners co-occurring collaborative serving Maine will be the lead um, coordinating our distance learning program. So that's all of our online webinars and courses, live, recorded, self-paced. Uh, so they'll be managing that aspect of that. Um, in terms of the staff, so I'll, I will, of course, be uh, serving as the director role for the center. Um, our training and outreach coordinator is Aaron Dunn, who's actually been with Ad Care for quite a while and actually has been the lead on our main based prevention uh, initiative. So we've moved her over uh, to the PTTC um, because she does really great work. So we're very happy to have her leading our efforts on building the network, building those collaborations and um, communications, but also being the lead on developing our in-person face-to-face programs. Um, at CCSME, Terrence Sprague will be our distance learning coordinator. So he will be the lead on the development and implementation of all of our live and recorded webinars and self-paced courses. 
So two main goals uh, with our New England PTC and the PTTC, and this is what we put in our application uh, as part of our cooperative agreement with SAMHSA. So our first goal is to increase the capacity of the New England prevention professional workforce to use prevention research to, pre to prevent and reduce uh, substance use disorders. So that's done through a few different objectives. Um, one is to build those alliances within New England among, across the prevention infrastru infrastructure within each state, but of course also looking at building collaboration between the states. Um, conducting an assessment of skills and training needs of the New England prevention workforce, developing and delivering in-person and distance learning trainings, to develop and disseminate prevention tools, references, and resources to aid putting prevention uh, prevention research into practice, and then uh, the provi providing those intensive technical assistance services we described earlier. Uh, the second goal is to increase the capacity of the New England Prevention Professional Workforce to utilize core prevention skill sets in the prevention of substance use disorders. So basically, we just want to uh, kind of ensure that you know the professionals within our region have sort of that that base level of knowledge and skills that they need to um, to perform uh, in their role. So um, looking at where we can build some in-state capacities to provide those core trainings, um, developing some advanced level courses, because that's something we've heard already is a big need in the region, um, you know, continuing to grow the experienced workforce in our region. And then something also, you know, is really exciting is we're gonna be looking at developing and implementing a program to pr promote prevention careers in New England. Um, so really looking forward to um, that piece where something we've done here in Maine more broadly um, with behavioral health careers. They're so looking to kind of adapt that maybe in some way and um, you know, focused on prevention, but expand it of course to, to New England. So uh, what we're working on now is, you know, we've been working to get out to the six New England states to meet with the state prevention offices and, and uh, connect with other key stakeholders. Um, if we haven't talked to you yet, send us an email. We would love to, to learn more about your organization or your work. So please reach out to us. Um, I'll contact information at the end for that. Um, we are recruiting um, and establishing a New England PTTC Advisory Council, which is pretty much ready to, get, ready to go. So they'll be, that council will really be our guiding voice and, um, you know, body of experts to kind of, um, again, kind of point in the direction of where we should go with some of these programs. Um, we're working with our evaluator to create an assessment for the workforce and really that's about, you know, trying to just learn what the training gaps and needs are. Um, so look forward to that. The um, PTTC network um, is in the process of obtaining some of the materials from the CAPT. So that was, of course, the previous um, model for uh, prevention training and technical assistance. So some of those materials, particularly around the those core trainings, the SAPS trainings, the substance abuse prevention skill training, and the uh, ethics curriculums, those are in the process of being transferred to the PTTC network uh, with the goal of getting some online moderated courses available as well as supporting the you know this providing support for the states that are looking to implement these in person as well um, so we already have some initiatives in development so keep an eye out for those we actually have some webinars um, we're starting to develop coming out in the next couple of months in march and april so uh, keep an eye out for that and um, another big thing we're really excited about and actually we Ed Care Maine has long been a part of this planning committee before the annual New England Summer School of Addiction Studies. So, but through the PTTC taking a kind of more active role in developing and sponsoring some of the prevention content of that summer school. So uh, keep an eye on our website for that because um, we'll, be def we'll be letting you know when it's time to register and uh, some of the content we'll be sponsoring. Um, so what does the PTTC mean for the New England Prevention Workforce? Um, in a nutshell, more training, uh, more opportunities for technical assistance. Um, again, one of the big shifts, I think, between the CAPS model and the PTTC model is broadening access. So um, requests aren't going to have to come to the state. Um, but at the same time, the state will be able to, and certainly uh, we'll be working closely with the states to support 
you know, their needs uh, for, for their workforce, um, their state workforce, but of course the, the workforce that they're funding in their states. Uh, but there'll be other um, avenues for, for folks to make requests as well. Um, so DFC organizations, um, other statewide prevention organizations, um, colleges, universities. So it, it's really, um, it's wide open in terms of who can, um, you know, request and access our training uh, and technical assistance services. Um, you know, with, with the development of webinars and online courses, um, I mean, these are going to be all free. Uh, there's going to be no fee for folks um, doing our online trainings. So that is going to be a big plus for their workforce. So access to more training and more free training, which for those of you that are working towards or looking to recertify your prevention specialist certification, uh, that's going to be good news for you. Uh, and as I mentioned before, you know, the exciting opportunities to collaborate with mental health and with the treatment field and some of these initiatives for some of those cross-learning opportunities. So um, we want to hear from you. Um, if you have ideas of um, training needs in your state, uh, within your organization, um, we want to hear from you. If you are a trainer, if you have been doing a training, a great training in New Hampshire that you think would be great in the rest of the region, we want to hear from you. Um, if you want to just learn how you can be a part of the network, be a part of our work, we want to hear from you. Um, so here's our, our contact information is here. You can uh, send an email to myself or Aaron. Um, and we, again, we, we're, we're looking forward to meeting everybody, uh, meeting as many people as possible, meeting as many organizations as possible to build and strengthen the network and you know, just look at how we can work together to um, work towards those goals, which I think we all have, right? To uh, increase our capacity to address these issues uh, that are in our states and our communities. Um, the temporary network is actually now the real network uh, website. So pttcnetwork.org, our website is live. Um, launched just uh, February 21st. Um, so there you will be able to see um, all the upcoming events, resources that we're developing, um, any kind of announcements or, or news articles, blogs, articles, um, one-stop shop for everything New England PTTC. So when we have an online course ready to go, um, there'll be a link there where you'll be able to go to that and register and participate. Um, so, so check that out um, to learn more about the center. And, um, you know, I'll just throw out, if you are going to reach out to us, I mean, if you do have some, if, if you are, you know, wanting to provide us some feedback, there's kind of three things we would love to hear from you about. Um, one is we'd love to know about the prevention skills of building needs in your state. Um, so, you know, that can be all any type of skills, evaluation, social norms, using the strategic prevention framework, um, implementing, implementing evidence-based practices. Um, so what do you think is needed in your state or within your organization? We'd love to get some feedback around that. Um, if you've been in this field for a while and you're looking for some advanced level training, uh, we want to develop that. But uh, what we need to hear from, from you all is some, some ideas on what you would like. So what are some of the content areas where you need some advanced level training? Um, do you know of a trainer that does advanced level training in a particular topic area? Um, send those ideas and suggestions to us. Um, and then what, you know, any other training in TA needs you have, particularly around any resource development? Is there, um, you know, do you want a liter literature review in a particular area? Do you need a white paper? Do you need um, a guide on how to implement um, prescription drug misuse strategies? Um, let us know about those things. So again, please send us an email, give us a call, we wanna hear from you. Um, tell us what's needed, tell us what you can provide, um, and how you would like to be a part of um, this effort. And um, with that, you know, just wanna thank you all for watching uh, this video, and um, we, look, we do really much look forward to hearing from you, and, and stay tuned, a lot of great, um, programs are coming soon, webinars and, and training. So um, keep an eye out for that. And with that, um, thank you very much. And again, looking forward to hearing from you. Take care.